I'd like to talk about is our Chief Marshal Sir Keith Park uh, and what was for me uh, an absolutely incredible discovery when I was in Auckland in April 2023. Now that's where Keith Park came from and for those who don't know when he was an Air Vice Marshal Keith Park commanded 11 group fighter command so that is London and the South East a pivotal area where the Battle of Britain was fought from. Now Park was a professional military man, a professional officer. He first fought in Gallipoli with the Anzacs uh, uh, as an artillery officer and won a military cross. Then he goes to the Western Front and joins the Royal Flying Corps and becomes a fighter ace. Incredible. Remains in the Royal Air Force between the wars, has a, a great career, uh, and by 1936-7 he is a uh, senior air staff officer at RAF Fighter Command Headquarters at Bentley Priory. Now there, he worked hand in glove with his boss, Air Chief Marshal Sir Hugh Dowding. And between them, they really put the icing on the cake with the system of air defence that was the best in the world at that time, uh, which very far-sightedly, because of Dowding having a very technical mind uh, and an understanding of these things, that integrated radar which was in its infancy, which provided early warning. That was just one of the things. I mean, it was an incredible system. Uh, and Keith Park was very much a part of creating all that. And Keith Park was a warrior. Keith Park was the only group commander and high commander of the Royal Air Force during the Second World War who could actually fly modern fighters. And during the Battle of Britain, we know that he fl flew himself around in his personal hurricane, OK-1. Um, but you wouldn't think that an Air Vice Marshal and a group commander would fly operationally. Or would you? That's the thing. So, personally, the uh, Park's story has always fascinated me. Uh, since uh, probably, I suppose, I was seven or eight years old and saw the Battle of Britain film, the 1969 epic starring... Trevor Howard in the role of Air Vice Marshal Park. Um, and over the years, I, I've come to research his career and his um, command of 11 Group and later Malta. Uh, he was an absolutely incredible tactician, incredible understanding of air power and strategy, and there is no mistake about that. Uh, and there I am um, in New Zealand, and Sir Keith died in Auckland in the 1970s. After the war, he went out there and he contributed to uh, society there as a counsellor. And I'm at the Auckland War Memorial Museum, and, and I didn't even go there to do with this. This was pure fluke. There was Sir Keith Park's uniform and his medal. And obviously, I was very interested to see these. But the remarkable thing was that on his medal ribbons was the Battle of Britain class, which is a tiny bronze bar that says Battle of Britain, which is worn on the full-size medal, the 1939-45 star. And then if, you, if, if it's just the medal ribbons, it's a, a bronze rosette, which indicates that the wearer uh, is a, a, a recipient of the Battle of Britain bar or clasp, as it's called. Now, the criteria for the award of the clasp is that a member of aircrew, fighter command aircrew, had to fly at least one operational sortie between the official dates of the Battle of Britain, which is 10th of July 1940 to the 31st of October 1940. So that's it. Why did Keith Park's medals include the Battle of Britain class? Seen as he's a group commander, he wasn't with one of the 72 uh, fighter or squadrons or accredited units that the Air Ministry considered took part in the Battle of Britain. So what's going on here? So when I got back, time to start research. Was it a mistake when the medals were displayed, perhaps? So a uh, bit of Googling and looking at my books and things. Uh, and no, clearly, there is Sir Keith Park wearing uh, the Battle of Britain clasp on his medals with pictures of him post-war. So clearly not a mistake. Um, the next thing is... Where's his logbook? Because uh, was he 
uh, uh, ever uh, officially awarded the class because you won't find Keith Park, well, actually you will now, but you, you wouldn't have hitherto found Keith Park in any list of the few. Not on the London Monument at Westminster, not on the Sir Christopher Nor Foxley Norris Memorial Wall at the National Memorial Site at Capelly Fern or anywhere else. So why has he got the bar? Well, Gail Romano at the Auckland War Memorial Museum could shed no light on the matter. I rekindled contact with the Park family in Auckland, um, Sir Keith's great nephews now, uh, Brian and Stephen, uh, and the family could shed no light on it. So the, the, the trail then went to the Royal New Zealand Air Force Museum in Wellington and Simon Moody, who used to work at the RAF Museum at Hendon. Uh, and lo and behold, uh, at that museum is preserved Sir Keith's logbook. Well, that's amazing because that is the document we need uh, to get to the bottom of this. So I get a copy of the logbook and on the 10th of July, that official start date, Sir Keith flies himself from North Holt in his personal Hurricane OK-1 uh, down to Lim, West Morling, and flies over a convoy. Well, the fighting at that time was over the Channel Convoy. So if he's flying over a channel convoy, the Hurricane must have been armed. I mean, no, there's no way his Air Vice Marshal Park going to fly himself around with, with, without the means to defend himself apart from anything else. But arguably, that is an operational sortie. Two days later, Park then escorts the Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, from Kenley to Northolt. Another operational sortie. So clearly he does um, uh, uh, qualify for the Battle of Britain class. Now, what I then discovered is there is actually no official role of the Battle of Britain pilots and air crew, the few. The only uh, role is a de facto role, which, which is their medal entitlement cards. And Sir Keith Parks is missing. So this is extraordinary that, that Sir Keith Park all these years has been a legitimate class holder, but will not be found on any role. Well, all of that has now changed. The evidence was put to the Ministry of Defence Air Historical Branch in London, who accepted the evidence that Sir Keith was a legitimate class holder. And in due course, along with some other names uh, of people who have uh, since been discovered to qualify for the class, uh, Sir Keith's name will be added to the Sir Christopher Foxley Norris Memorial Wall at the National Memorial site. Now, it's not possible to add his name physically to the London Monument because it's bronze, but uh, Ed McManus with the um, online memorial and the biographies of the few will be adding Sir Keith to that. Uh, and in New Zealand, this was big news. You know, Sir Keith Park is a big name in New Zealand. And it amazed me because... In, in Auckland, there are streets named after him. There are various statues of, of Sir Keith Park in, in Auckland and elsewhere. Rotorua, a big tourist area where there were connections. Uh, uh, it really is extraordinary. Sir Keith Park is New Zealand's biggest war hero. No question about it. And in this country, we owe Sir Keith Park so very much indeed. Uh, you can go to the Battle of Britain bunker, as it's called, at Uxbridge, which was Sir Keith's underground operations room which has been uh, restored as to, as to how it was on 15th of September 1940 for example when the Prime Minister Winston Churchill joined Park uh, in his operations room to watch the unfolding battle that day and what a day to pick to go there you know uh, so so you can still reach out to where Sir Keith Park was but what an incredible man uh, really and to have to have made this discovery uh, and had um, uh, justice prevail, if you like, that Sir Keith Park is now legitimately one of the few, uh, was an incredible thing. The family, the Park family, were absolutely delighted, as you can imagine, uh, and so, so I think was everybody in the Battle of Britain community, because it's long overdue recognition. It's a pity that Sir Keith himself 
um, you know, isn't around now to see to see the excitement that this generated. So very pleased to have had a key part in, in that discovery and um, making sure that uh, justice prevailed, I suppose. And I think it was particularly important for me, having studied uh, what's called the Big Wing controversy, which is this supposed tactical argument during the Battle of Britain. Matter of fact, you know, I've written books about it and, and have probed deeply into the politics and the personalities of the senior officers and politicians involved and what were their motives and so on to, that led to Park and Dowding being essentially sacked after the Battle of Britain until Park goes to Malta uh, and sorts it out. You know, I mean, he was an absolutely amazing man. So I hope that this, uh, in many ways, makes up for that and uh, really, um, yeah, proud to have played a part in that. And uh, uh, that's just one thing that's come out of the big eight volume, uh, unprecedented 360 degree narrative that we're working on for the Battle of Britain Memorial Trust. Uh, and that's the level of it. I mean, it was a child's discovery, but I was in New Zealand and I was researching. So you make your own luck really uh, in, in that respect. But um, yeah, there we are, Keith Park, what a story. I was delighted to speak about it uh, at, uh, the RAF Club in London's annual Battle of Britain dinner uh, in 2023 at the invitation of my great friend, um, Gulf War POW John Peters, who's a trustee there now. And uh, it was well received. I mean, people who know the history and know of Keith Park know what a big deal this is. So it was absolutely brilliant to, to do that. And uh, as I say, it's just one of the things that we're going to talk about as we unfold and unpack the, this great narrative and uh, new history. So thanks for listening. Do subscribe to the channel. We've got all kinds of interesting stuff coming up. Wide, wide range of topics, hundreds of shorts, hundreds of hundreds of conversations that we need to have arising out of this new, new research. So uh, thanks for listening.